weather aren't we Alex we are and uh, Reed really have you to uh, really happy to have you next to me aujourd'hui Reed on va commenter les championnats canadiens universitaires Reed quelle est ta mémoire préférée uh, par rapport au championnat uh, universitaire well interestingly enough my last cross country race was here at Thames Valley Golf Course it was a CIS championship uh, quite a few years ago uh, but the team was it was such a tight battle our teams tied Guelph and Windsor, and it came down to the fifth, uh, the fifth score. Uh, overheating today, so will I think conditions for cross country couldn't be better. Yeah, this is this this is exactly what all these athletes want want on a on a championship. Qui a été fait en début de saison, uh, donc les athlètes connaissent très très. Euh, on va voir euh, que ce ne sera peut-être pas un grand facteur. On va vraiment voir que les athlètes vont euh, devoir euh, se, se reposer sur leur euh, forme physique ou voir euh, se, se reposer sur leur euh, forme physique aujourd'hui et non pas sur qui connaît mieux le parcours parce que tous les athlètes le connaissent très bien. Well, like tactics and what are they asking their coaches right now? Right now, uh, they're finalizing their last little bit of uh, tactics and really, I think we're going to have to go all out. Uh, early on in the in, in the race today because um, the athletes are fit and they are ready to go and uh, lots of spec spectators uh, along this along along the, the um, along, along the, the course uh, and we'll we'll have uh, we'll have great races and fast races I think that's what's going on right now yeah looking forward to a quick commercial break here is that moment again the one you dream of every night La seule chose qui te préoccupe, c'est la gloire. Le cheminement de la réussite. Of pushing yourself further than ever before. But the true glory is in the shadows. Le sacrifice que tu fais. Quand toutes les chances sont contre toi. When you can't push one more second. Chase the glory. Viseo.
Hey, you sports fans, check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the Nike Team Collection. Visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection Nike Team. They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. Sports Cross Country Championships. We are starting off with the women's race in about 20 minutes. We're going to go over um, some of the uh, top teams and uh, top uh, individuals uh, we have uh, coming up here. So the, the coaches' poll is interesting because uh, we'll talk about it before the race, but but uh, really after after this race, nobody really cares about what the polls say, right? That's why we do the races. But um, yeah, we got UBC. Uh, so these are the points. These are the how many people have, how many coaches have actually voted for. So you know you're looking for a high score here. So UBC, followed by Western, Laval, Guelph, McMaster, St. Francis, Xavier, St. FX, um, Victoria, Queens, Saskatchewan, and UNB. So those are your top ten ranked teams going to, to the championships. Um, we got. What, what, do you, what do you think about the uh, the top? I would say. I see the top four teams, Alex. Look close. It's going to be a great battle today on the course. Um, I think UBC deserves to be in first place. They have lots of depth. Um, and I think Guelph in fourth place might be uh, the surprise. But Western definitely had a f top five women that were are so close together. Um, and then now we see the start list for the UBC Thunderbirds. Uh, in first, we have Kyla Becker. And Kyla has been... Um, yeah, this is a. I mean, this is a really deep team here, right? So UBC went one three last year, but those uh, Glenna Sim and Kiana Gibson are not back this year. But we have Kyla Becker; she was seventeenth here last year. Um, so, you know, so, so th this team has a lot of experience, right? Um, they don't really have the upfront firepower as they may have had last year, but a lot of uh, a lot of experience here at the ch uh, the championships. Um, we also have uh, transfer from Queens, uh, Marley Beckett. She was 11th place last year. So um, being from, uh, you know, ha having started off at Queens, she probably has a lot of experience on this particular course. Um, all the Ontario teams uh, are all, all often do the, uh, the, the Vigor Salter invite early in the year. Of course, UBC came out earlier this year to, uh, to get some experience on the course because um, knowing that U Sport Championships will be here. Um, and then we got Holly McGilvery and Rachel Mortimer and Katie Newlove. So you have a really deep team here with UBC. And Katie Newlove has just had a breakthrough race at uh, uh, Ken West. Uh, she was the MVP. Um, so that'll be uh, someone to uh, look for. Uh, and uh, for the Western Mustang now, uh, Western Mustang has another really deep team. Uh, Ana Caruthers, Chloe Couts, Sophie Couts, Sandra Guga, Erica Jordan, Heidi Orling, and Olivia Houssel, who's a transfer from Guelph this year. Um, lots of good athletes. Yeah, I mean, of course, they know this course. It's, it's their home course. Um, we have the twins, uh, Chloe and Sophie, and... For those out there wanting to uh, di distinguish them, Chloe will be wearing the pink spikes and uh, Sophie will be wearing the yellow ones. Uh, they are they're running very uh, close together this year. Um, Erica Jordan, Heidi Orling, and Olivia Russell are their other you know, top finishers. We have quite a, quite a good experience at the U-Sport Pass Championships. Olivia, running for Guelph, um, has finished ninth and 10th in the past uh, two uh, U Sports Cross Country Championships, and you know Heidi's with a 26th place, um, and then last year Sophie Coots was as high as seventh, so earning first team All Canadian honors. Um, so yeah, really, uh, once again, a really deep team. They go, they go quite deep uh, through and five runners. Can you believe how close they finished at OUAs, where they were three, four, five, six, and seven? This is unbelievable. I, if they can repeat that today, that will be. Definitely the winners. Yes, and, and and UBC women also had a very similar finish at the uh, at the Can West Championships. You know, just just packing them in, uh, you know, in, in the top ten. Um, you know, like maybe some team dynamics going on there. You know, trying to run as a team as long as you can for the AK. Um, and the battle again between those two will definitely uh, be. Um, 
looking, look closely by Laval parce que l'Université Laval arrive avec une équipe euh, très en forme et avec une coureuse euh, en Catherine Beauchemin qui va définitivement euh, pouvoir peut-être changer la donne. Alors, on voit ici la liste des athlètes euh, Catherine Beauchemin, Jade Bérubé, Camille Boudreau, Elodie Caston-Guy-Girard, Alice côté alors Emma Dagenet, Camille Riopel. Alors, Catherine euh, Beauchemin euh, a définitivement une longue liste euh, de belles reconnaissances. C'est une athlète accomplie. Euh, elle a euh, terminé euh, l'année dernière, euh, elle a terminé sixième et elle a terminé troisième l'année d'avant. Euh, donc, franchement, Catherine a beaucoup d'expérience. C'est sa dernière année. Elle étudie en médecine à l'Université Laval. Euh, C'est une spécialiste du steeple chase et euh, elle a euh, gagné les Jeux du Canada au steeple et euh, aux 1500 mètres. Donc, la course de fond, euh, c'est son, euh, son truc. Euh, cette année, elle est invaincue dans toutes les courses qu'elle a faites. Donc, euh, aujourd'hui, on a bien hâte de voir quand elle va se mesurer aux athlètes du, euh, des, de, de, de l'Université de, de Colombie-Britannique ainsi qu'aux athlètes de l'Université Western. Euh, suivi euh, dans son équipe par Jade Birubé, qui a dû combattre quelques blessures dans les dernières années, mais euh, maintenant, elle étudie en santé publique. Elle est à sa quatrième année. Euh, elle a terminé en douzième place l'année dernière, donc euh, un petit peu plus loin que sa compatriote Catherine, euh, et a terminé neuvième en 2021. Euh, la, sa meilleure performance sur ce, course, sur ce, sur ce parcours pardon, euh, est une troisième place l'année dernière, et Catherine avait remporté. Donc, euh, beaucoup, beaucoup de, de belles choses, de belles performances de côté de ses athlètes. À ne pas oublier Emma Dagenet qui a terminé troisième euh, cet hiver euh, en mars euh, au championnat canadien universitaire euh, où elle a terminé troisième au 1000 mètres. Donc Emma Dagenet, c'est quelqu'un qui va courir un peu plus vite. Donc si elle peut être dans le groupe euh, de tête euh, à la fin de la course, je pense qu'on pourrait avoir droit toute une fin de course de sa part. Euh, donc l'équipe de Laval est en ce moment, euh, peut-être sur le podium. On pourrait l'espérer sur le podium en troisième position. Je pense que la bataille va être féroce entre l'Université de Colombie-Britannique et l'Université Western. Donc, est-ce que l'équipe de Laval saura avoir cinq athlètes très proches une de l'autre pour aller peut-être brouiller les cartes euh, avec l'Université de la Colombie-Britannique? Ça reste à voir. Et euh, on a bien hâte que cette course commence euh, donc, euh, dans, les, euh, dans les prochaines dans les prochains, euh, 15 minutes. Elles sont en train de s'échauffer, elles sont en train de faire leur stratégie. Et euh, j'espère vraiment que, que tout le monde est en forme. Euh, je parlais justement au coach euh, juste avant, Tommy Lecourt, euh, Félix-Antoine Lapointe. Tout le monde est très en forme. Donc, euh, les, filles, les filles se sentent en contrôle et euh, ils ont vraiment, vraiment hâte de courir. Yeah, so I mean, the Laval team, I think, is really exciting because they have the top, those top two uh, athletes, Jade and uh, Kathleen, will be, will be up there pushing. So, different dynamics than the UBC and Western team. UBC and Western, to me, are like a real full, like, deep team through five, whereas, uh, you know, Laval is really punching up the their first two so it will be really interesting to see how it plays out um you know the the front gaps you know in the top 10 are a bit more spread out so you know five second gap like a five second gap might might only be one or two places where a five second gap when you're in the tens and twenties uh can be a few places so the, you know the way that the team scores will play will be very interesting um so yeah we have two deep teams uh, ranked ubc and western and then we have laval with some with some firepower up front and then the guelph griffins who are ranked fourth we we another a slightly different uh team here where we have uh, i would say when i look at the team i, I think of mid d um uh power right so Your OUA champion, uh, Julia Agostinelli, she, um, she, you know, she, she is a mid-distance runner um, and proved it with a, with a strong kick at OUAs to take that championship. Um, also on the team, right, uh, Cameron Orman. So uh, she had a, a great offset career, so a cross-country specialist, but also really quick, right? Or like her mile time uh, indoors last year was, 
I have to go off of memory here, but like 430 or 432. 430. So, so very fast, right? Um, she was 17th place here um, as a rookie back in 20, 2019 at the U Sport Cross Country Championship. So, she, I mean, you know, she, she knows cross country, um, but, you know, once again, mid-D. And then, and then Nina Whitford. So uh, same thing here. She is uh, a 1,500 um, and 800, you know, 1,000-meter one, 1, specialist. However, she was fifth here last year um, at the U Sport Cross Country Championships. So, you know, she's one of the top returners um, uh, from last year. So, you know, a, a team where, you know, if, if this race is, is going out a bit slow and hanging around, uh, Nina, Julia, and Cameron can all pick up a lot of places uh, towards the end. So it's, I would say it's in UBC's and Western's um, – it, for, for them it, it, to keep it honest to, to keep Guelph out of this race and Julia is bringing a new energy to this group she wasn't she's never competed at U Sport Championships before but she won OUA so can she do it again two weeks later and can she just give it out out and surprise surprise everyone yeah, so uh, the, the team competition is is really like really really going to be interesting. We have a few more individuals um, who are running with teams and, and who are not who who will be up there. Um, so just a little reminder: um, if uh, if a, if an individual does not have a team here, they won't count towards uh, team scores. But um, uh, why, don't we, why don't you why don't you give us a little highlight of uh, Caitlin Harrison there, Alex, uh, running for Saskatchewan? So. Yes. So. So she doesn't have a team, but Caitlin uh, was fifth at uh, was third, sorry, at the West, uh, the Can West Conference Championships two weeks ago, and she came twenty uh, fifth last year, but fifth in twenty twenty one, bringing lots of experience from um, Saskatchewan Huskies, and she uh, she she could be uh, out there in top five and making uh, stealing points from other teams, even though she's an individual. No, she does have a team. Oh, she but, does. Have, but her but her team's not. Uh, in the ranked uh, ranked high, I believe. But um, we also have Rosalind Barrett from McMaster who might be up there as well. No team. No team. No team. <laughs> chose qui te préoccupe, c'est la gloire, le cheminement de la réussite, of pushing yourself further than ever before, but the true glory is in the shadows, le sacrifice que tu fais, quand toutes les chances sont contre toi, when you can't push one more second, chase the glory, viseo. fans check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the nike team collection visit the shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection nike team to the 2023 U-Sports Cross Country Championships here in London, Ontario. Uh, we are just going over some of the, uh, the teams, the key players, and uh, kind of getting you guys up to speed on what, we are, uh, what we're about to see in about uh, seven minutes' time. So um, we're going to go back over some of the individuals who, uh, who could also be making a, a statement today at the uh, Cross Country Championships. So, um, yeah, 
So we have Rosalind Barrett from uh, the, Maro uh, the Marauders. Um, she's in third year and she finished second at the UA, uh, OUA conference uh, two weeks ago. Um, she finished 30th last year and she's definitely been improving. Um, she has a, a PB in the 3,000 meters of 9.45, so she definitely will be there uh, at the end and uh, making it uh, for top, uh, definitely a second team All-Canadian. Yeah, great. I mean, a great, great, great run from Roslyn at the OU Championships. Um, and then uh, coming all, all the way out from uh, Victoria out west, um, we have Elise Coates. She was eighth at the uh, Can West Championships this year. She'll be uh, leading the Vikes. Um, it's, uh, you know, she, she finished eighth, so she was right in there with the UBC women. So, um, it, it, like, the, the depth out there is, it's, it, like, it, it's so close, you know, like, you know, first first to tenth, I think at Can West was 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 quite a close race there. Yeah, and she um, the, the the team, the Vikes team, they are rebuilding and they are getting um, they are getting great leaders like Elise. Uh, so they are actually trying to progress and get their way up in the top five at um, at at U Sports. So we are seeing people gathering by the start line. Uh, exciting! We're, we're seeing all those uh, those athletes uh, striding, getting ready. As Reed was saying, nerves out. Reed, what do you remind? What do you remember from being an athlete uh, a few minutes before the race like this? Oh wow! Yeah, I mean, j just the excitement of like you know, you, you arrive to the course, you do a little jog on the course, and there's not much going on. And then once you like get out of your sweats. And you know, as we just saw, they're getting ready, they're ready, getting ready to go, going to the start line, and the, the crowds are picking up, and you're seeing all these familiar faces. And you know, because the team aspect in cross country is so important, you know, you're really like trying to feed off the energy of your team and trying to pump each other up, and and trying to make sure that everyone's excited for this race. And and, and any sort of cross country race, you know, especially this course, you got to go out fast because um, there's usually like a bottleneck or a turn early on this course. So. You know, it's it it is a little nerve wracking knowing that there's over 100 runners who are try, who, who all want to be in the exact same spot 250 meters into the race, right? So it's uh it is a little nerve wracking just to, just on top of the pain and hurt. You know, you're gonna go put yourself in through 8K. Absolutely, and the fact that is both individual and a team sport for cross country makes it so special. And uh, we'll, we'll, I, we'll we won't have the chance to hear that, but there's that really team feeling where everybody does their um, their shout just before their team their team chant just before it's all starts so you're feeling it's a, ba a battle yeah uh, it, it, you're exactly right like I wish we had microphones on some of these team chants because um, yeah it's, it's pretty it, you know, they're, they're, sometimes they're funny um, Guelph does this moo you thing um, I remember uh, when actually the the coach for the Saskatchewan Huskies here, Jamie Epp, he won uh, on this course 21 years ago, um, and uh, th their whole thing was who let the dogs out, right? So it was like you <laughs> know, it was, it's, Sherbrooke has this uh, uh, Maui chant uh, that they're uh, ch 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 they've been chanting for about uh, 30 years now. So you you hear the, all those different things, and it puts you in a, a great space. Yeah, a lot of tradition, you know, and it just over the years that these these teams of uh, are building off of, of the history of, of what they've done before so yeah two others not, we don't uh, so we're going to go for a quick uh, commercial break before we get back and uh, get and back we'll to come back the with the race after that shares they do it for the fun of it for the thrill for the camaraderie for the memories cbc sports just because they love it hey you sports fans check out shop.usports.ca for this week's promotional item from the nike team collection visitez le shop.usports.ca pour en profiter de la promotion de la semaine de la collection nike team 
that moment again. The one you dream of every night. La seule chose qui te préoccupe, c'est la gloire. Le cheminement de la réussite. Of pushing yourself further than ever before. But the true glory is in the shadows. Les sacrifices que tu fais. Quand toutes les chances sont contre toi. When you can't push one more second. Chase the glory. Viseo. En direct de London, vous écoutez les championnats de cross country U Sport à CBC Sport. Welcome back to the U Sport Cross Country Championships on CBC.ca. The race has just started and the athletes are on the course for 8K. So here we are. We're about 250 meters into the course. They're making a sweeping right turn, slightly uphill. It's hard to see from this drone shot, but uh, it's a slight uphill. They're going to come right back around. You can see all the spectators. They're running from the start line to, they'll probably see them about 300, 400 meters into the race. Of course, this is early going, so it looks like just one big pack. Hard to distinguish anybody from anybody else, but you rest assured, those top runners are trying to establish their place early on. Uh, it's, it's, it's not a tight course. Um, there's always room to pass, but when there's this many runners, it is hard to pass, right? So, You're going, to, you're going to want to get out front. You're going to want to establish that place and, you know, ultimately try to, like, hold on as, as long as you can with the, with, with the, with, with, with the lowest, lowest possible score. Et le terrain est assez, euh, euh, est assez ondulé, donc on ne voit pas, mais il y a beaucoup de petits trous. Euh, C'est assez difficile de garder un rythme constant, mais euh, les coureuses vont faire semblant que tout ça n'existe pas et vont simplement euh, trouver leur place, trouver la ligne, la bonne ligne. Et là, on voit que euh, le, le, le groupe reste très, très dense à l'avant et on espère que ça va conduire comme ça pour environ un autre 2 km. Wow, this is a really cool shot, this having this drone shot here. You know, you couldn't have got this last year in the Halifax uh, storm that they had. So, <laughs> thankfully, it's a nice sunny day. But um, uh, really, really cool shot. You can kind of see, uh, you know, once the runners go past the spectators, the spectators take off. They just take off looking for that for the next viewpoint along the course. The, the first the first couple K of this course, you can catch the runners a lot, right? So, there's like, there's all these little turns, and you can just get from one spot to the other, and... All right, so we got a little close-up shot this of uh, these turns. So, the, you know, you got tight turns, you got rolly terrain, there's little bumps. Um, it, you know, a, a golf course is smooth, but we're not running on the fairways here. We're running beside the fairways, right? So it, it, it's, it's a little rougher than you, than you might think, but... Um, and and as, as, they are, uh, keep, uh, as they keep going, uh, we can see in 2022... Um, Glennis Sim won the um, individual championships. Uh, Jesse Lacourse won in 2021 uh, from Laval. There was COVID in 2020. And uh, Lucia Stafford took the gold in 2019. And so did Brogan McDougall in 2018. So we see that there's no consistent uh, university that uh, gets uh, on the top of the podium. Yeah, it's actually interestingly enough, like in the last five championships, We've had four different teams win the uh, women's uh, the women's uh, championship here. So yeah, a lot of a lot of, a lot of different uh, you know uh, like I guess the the competition is just so tight. That it's it's from one team to the other. Versus you know the, uh, before that you'd see a lot of the same uh, repeat winners and also repeat team winners. So a lot of uh, a lot of different action coming up. I, we are getting close to 1K right now. Le premier kilomètre euh, arrive sous peu. On voit que le groupe de devant commence euh, définitivement à se détacher là, de, du, euh, du reste du groupe. Euh, ça reste euh, un peloton d'environ 20 athlètes, donc euh, rien n'est gagné. Euh, il reste 7 km à faire et là, on commence à s'installer dans un rythme qui, euh, qui va se maintenir pendant plusieurs kilomètres environ euh, six jusqu'à temps que la, le sprint final arrive. 
Yeah, that's right, Alex. They, the the one one K is done, so now everyone is settling into their pace. Um, they're trying to find the rhythm, and they're trying to like really. Like, it's another close shot here. You can see it's just still tightly packed right now. They're about to go up a little hill, so there's a you know it's it's not, it's not a super hilly course by any means, but for cross country, we we do have some some hills, and I think after these th this uphill downhill uphill combination. I think we're going to see it uh, spread out a little bit more, and and then be able to tell you know who's who's in that front group, uh, what teams are established in that 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 front group of twenty. And we were talking about those uh, those hills, and here's the graphic of the uh, elevation. Um, there's about 30 meters difference, and so the first kilometer is pretty much all uphill. And then after that, there's a long and slow downhill up to five kilometers, and we get back up. Uh, from five to six, and then it's a downhill to this to the finish line. So there's going to be a really good finish here uh, yeah. from those ladies. Yeah, the last the last kilometer of this course is just a straight line. So it's uh, you can just you, you can you're just hammering home because you're going in that same direction the whole time. So here we go. Like this quick downhill right here um, is going to be followed by they're going to cross the golf course and then they're going to go up the steep hill and. This 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 is I think when when we're going to start seeing packs establishing themselves and hopefully we'll get some uh, some camera shots from the front and then we can uh, see the see the bibs and see the teams and and see who's uh, who's, who's running uh, aggressively in this race today. I saw the Western ladies were all together. They're using the same strategy at they use at OUAs that was that uh, gave them. Uh, the championships uh, as a team. So we'll see if they can make that happen again today. Yeah, and like right away, we're now now this 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 slight downhill here. Right after this uphill, we're seeing that last drone shot. You can see a, a couple athletes really stringing out this this race now. Um, this is a uh, you know there's there's over 100 women racing today, so it's yeah. I mean it's 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 a it, it goes back far. This this I would call it like a, a serpent maybe this. All right, so here we have the last uh, the last five years, so four championships. Laval has won um, three of the last four championships, with Queens taking the 2019 title. Um, so yeah, like, like like as we said earlier, Laval beat UBC by one point last year. Um, UBC doesn't return their top two runners from last year, but they don't lose any depth. They're they're just as deep as they were last year. So they're a team that they they can win this. Uh, by having a deep, you know, kind of like that fourth, fifth runner um, placing quite high up in these championships. Ouais, Laval qui a dominé les dernières années au niveau du cross country. Laval qui a un programme très très fort euh, depuis depuis cinq ans euh, qui ont construit ce programme là depuis plusieurs années. Et euh, cette année, on a des nouveaux visages, mais on a euh, Catherine Beauchemin et euh, Jade Bérubé, là, qui devrait être les deux premières euh, athlètes euh, du club à passer le fil d'arrivée. Okay. Still in a pretty big uh, group at the front, about 20 minutes, uh, 20 athletes, sorry, that are running together. There's one athlete that has just detached from the, um, the, the pack. Yeah, somebody's out front. We're trying to. Uh, I'm trying to squint and trying to figure out who that is, but um, it's a little difficult to to see. But um, you know, the, the the team. So here's here's something that will be coming. It will be interesting at, at the 3K mark. Um, we have uh, timing mats, which will give us the the names of the runners and will um, add up the team scores too, which will be. Uh, which will be very helpful. So they are um, probably through 2K now. They're going to be they'll be coming up to that timing mat, and we'll know a lot more information about what what is actually happening. And we're race. seeing lots of fans. And if you're a fan, uh, you uh, and you want to celebrate each U Sports team's gold medal with your every own commemorative apparel from T Litz and Sports, check out uh, shop. Usport.ca uh, on Tuesday afternoon for exclusive U Sports Champions collection. But hurry, supplies will go fast on this limited time offer. That's the U Sports Championship collection on sale Tuesday exclusively at shop.usport.ca. So if you're one of those fans who really like their university team, you can't, you don't want to miss that. All right, so another sh another shot of uh, of all the team championships. Okay, so here we go. We can, we have a better view. We have, a, I see a U. 
you Vic runner up there. We have lots of UBC. I see Kyla Becker up there. Um, it looks like uh, a U, uh, I'm, I'm going to guess that's Catherine Beauchemin mm -hmm. from Laval uh, right up right up towards the front as well. And, uh, you know, when we're talking about the, the, the whole field here, like the 100 plus runners. So every team has seven runners here, right? Um, top five scores. You add those scores up just like golf. You want the, the lowest points um, for the for the winning team. So the sixth and seventh runner, although they don't count in the team score, they they can be displacers, right? So a, a team like UBC or Western, they're going to want to sneak a sixth and seventh runner ahead of their competitors' fifth runner, uh, pushing them back, you know, a, a spot or two. So, uh, you know, of course, if something happens to the to, to one of the top five, like like you know, sometimes it happens, like twist an ankle or whatever, like the sixth and seventh runner, could, you know, all of a sudden becomes a, a, the fifth runner, but. Um, beyond that, it's very important to, to try to displace some of the other um, some of the other teams. So yeah, that front shot we saw lots of lots of Western, lots of UBC and Laval. Um, Guelph is also up there. Very, I mean, it's too tight to, too tight to call. We're we're gonna hope these um, that the that the timing mat gives us a lot of information coming up in, in less than a kilometer. Et on voit que euh, ce n'est pas nécessairement les meilleurs qui partent en premier. Souvent, on va essayer de voir au avec leurs compétitrices, ils vont rester dans le groupe, essayer de se cacher du vent, prendre le rythme, prendre leur... ils n'ont pas besoin de penser, donc ils se cachent derrière les autres. Et vers la fin de la course, ils vont avoir un petit peu plus d'énergie que les, les athlètes qui ont dû aller devant. Euh, donc, ça peut être une stratégie aussi. De, de rester à l'arrière et de ne pas être dans le top 5 en ce moment, juste être dans le groupe de tête et de rester en contact avec les, les meneuses. Donc, je pense que c'est ce que Catherine Beauchemin est en train de faire en ce moment. Yeah, and here they're, they're coming right up to 3K here. I, 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 Alex, do you, do you think you, it would have been this, like, congested at, there's the 3K timing, Matt. Do you think it would have been just this, this congested at 3K or you, were you expecting it to be a bit more spread out? Uh, I think it's... Not as spread out as I would have thought. I would have thought uh, the girls would have left a lot quicker. We see there's definitely a pack in front, but I would have expected a bigger gap at this point with the, with those uh, runners that are coming up on the screen. Yeah, and it's not a windy day. So when it is a windy day, you do see the pack stay together a lot more. And, you know, nobody wants to just be that, you know, that one person out front leading and, and taking the wind on their own. But, um, yeah, I, I would say I would say that just just shows the depth right now of 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 competition here in the in the U sport. All right, the best of women's university soccer square off today at 3 p.m. Eastern time as the UBC Thunderbirds take on Trinity Western Spartans for university gold at the 2023 U Sports Women's Soccer Championship from Queen's University in Ontario. Only on cbcsports.ca and CBC Gem. Ouais, ceux qui aiment les, euh, les sports d'équipe, les meilleures équipes de soccer féminin se rencontrent cet après-midi en grande finale canadienne en direct de Kingston, euh, en Ontario. C'est le match de la médaille d'or euh, entre les euh, UBC Thunderbirds euh, contre les Spartans de l'Université Western euh, au championnat de soccer féminin U-Sport. Suivez l'action dès 15h à Radio-Canada Sport. All right, so this course has a 5K loop and a 3K loop, right? So 8K, um, there, there, it's a traditional 5K loop that's been used on this course for many, many years. Um, and then once they come through the start-finish area, once, they, once they're about 300 meters into the race, then they cut onto the, uh, the 3K loop, which is the second loop. So, so now they're, you know, they're almost 4K into this race, about 4K in. Um, so that's, that's the halfway point. You know, usually at the halfway point, Um, you, get, you get a good feeling of 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 what team is 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 ahead or um, right, right now you you know within within two seconds you know it, it could be anybody's game. So I saw as well as all the teams that we were talking about. I saw uh, Rosalind Barrett from McMaster up in that lead pack still. Cannot quite see who the leader was. Um, wearing a white singlet. But there's still 20 people in that lead group, and I think from now on the pace will just start increasing. Okay, so here we go. Uh, yeah, Catherine Beauchemin, Sophie Coutts. Uh, so here's a, um, a, a, an athlete from UBC Okanagan that's uh, coached by Melinda Elmore, Tori. Uh, that is uh, 
Uh, uh, she's running great here. We got Katie Newlove, UBC Thunderbirds, Kyla Becker, uh, Co uh, Chloe Coots. We got uh, Jen Erickson from uh, UBC as well, Marley Beckett, UBC, Roslyn Barrett, and uh, uh, Allie from uh, St. FX. So right now, uh, as a team, uh, we could see that uh, the UBC Thunderbirds are doing really well, putting number, f they are in fourth, fifth, and seventh and eighth place. Uh, and we see that uh, Western is not far behind with the Couts twin that are running uh, in that lead pack as well. But Catherine Beauchemin uh, is taking the lead, so hopefully she'll be uh, doing, doing the, the keeping uh, going as fast as she is right now. All right, cool. The, uh, I love seeing this. This is the, the, the team scores mid-race. So this is a uh, UBC. It actually has a commanding lead right now. 32 points over 53 but you know like i said earlier they, they are so tightly bunched um two seconds makes a huge difference that th this can this can massively change um within a few seconds right so saying effects is actually sitting in third place right now this is a team coached by eric gillis and then um guelph sitting in fourth and mcmaster in fifth so um yeah although it looks like ubc is is, is uh ubc has got a has got quite a quite a big lead right now right. um western sitting there quite pretty as well with uh, a lot of runners in that top pack but, but we can see that actually centific sitting in third is the surprise of the day yeah so i mean a lot of these teams actually don't race each other in the in dur during the season right so um it, it's hard to well see actually saint effects did come here um to preview the course at the uh, salter uh vigors invite early on in the year but other than but that's so early in the year but They, the teams don't race each other, so sometimes you know a, a team like Saint Effects, they're they're out east and they're not racing a lot of other teams. They could come in and surprise. Um, you know the, the the Ontario teams know each other really well, but the Can West teams and and, and out east um, and the, and the Quebec teams they they don't always know the competition. And it's like I said, it's 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 so competitive that you know five ten seconds the difference of a finishing time in the 8K makes a, makes a huge difference in um, score, uh, placing scores. La saison de cross-country a commencé en septembre. Donc, pour certaines équipes, euh, ça fait presque trois mois de course. Euh, donc, ils ont couru trois à quatre fois. Euh, et maintenant, c'est aussi une, une, une question de rester en santé et de s'assurer de suivre le plan pour euh, arriver au sommet de sa forme à London. Uh, that can play as well... Um, As a team, uh, can anybody, uh, everyone stay healthy? Uh, and uh, right now, we might see that Centifix women have just peaked a little bit better. We'll see if they can keep that going for the entire race. Yeah, so uh, we're about 17, just over 17 minutes into this race. I'm expecting uh, the, the, the top runners to be coming in around 28 minutes. So we still have a good uh, 10, 11 minutes of racing here um, at the Thames Valley Golf Course. Um, yeah, so another another... Uh, uh, top runner that we haven't we didn't talk about in our preview would be Tori Bach from uh, UBC Okanagan. So she was the 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 runner that we saw in the white singlet um, from the drone shot. So we we couldn't uh, pick out, but yeah, coming uh, she's with the UBC Okanagan team. So um, you know a different team than the than the UBC Thunderbirds. But yeah, with the Thunderbirds, um, I mean they. With, with four in the top eight, it, it really is their race um, to lose now. Uh, they've established themselves really well, and they are the top-ranked team coming in, so this is no surprise to see them uh, running as strong as, as they are. Um, I just thought uh, I thought Western would be uh, maybe matching them a little bit better, but we'll see how the rest of this, this course goes. But it, right as, as of now, it's UBC Thunderbirds um, holding on to that top team spot. I think I've counted already five athletes from Laval, uh, and they were in front of the fifth from UBC. So could, that could change a bit of things. So, All right, so coming in for the last lap, the 3K to go now. Yeah, so they, they just they're, they're basically just crossing the start line again. Those are the start line boxes that you see. Um, it's a little steep. It's hard to see from here, but there's a steep little hill that just that, that takes the sting out of your legs. But now they're now they're ramping up for this last 3K. Um, this is a 
a well-established pack off the off off the front. I I don't think you're going to see runners off of that pack make make their way into that that lead pack. Um, but uh, uh, sure, surely this pack is going to break up, and um, you're going to see some shrapnel off the back half because this the, the racing's hot right here. All right, CBC TV is your home for the 2023 Canada Life Vanier Cup from Kingston, Ontario. Catch the best in university football action Saturday, November 25th at 1 p.m. Eastern on CBC TV, CBC Gem, and cbcsports.ca. TVA Sport est votre réseau pour les séries de la Coupe Vanier V 2023 dès samedi prochain avec la Coupe Mitchells et UTEC, la grande finale parvenant du stade Richardson. À Kingston est le 25 novembre dès midi 30. La Coupe Vanier Canada vit exclusivement aux zones de TVA Sport. All right, so here in the course is where it splits off. So, looking at the drone shot, they would have gone to the right on the first lap, but they're making a quick left and they're going to quickly get back onto um, the established race route. So, that that timing mat that we saw them at 3K um, will actually be coming up quite soon now. So, they're going to get it again. Um, at 6k so um with, with so that'll be 2k to go so that will be the next um next time we're gonna get a lot of info on on, on see if it does ubc still have a stranglehold on that at that first place or you know has a team like laval uh western guelph um caught up and is is sane effect still sitting pretty or did they go out too hot um th this is all the stuff that uh that we're gonna we're gonna find out um Really soon. Really? It was it was about nine athletes uh, together. So Catherine Beauchemin est encore uh, dans le dans à, à l'avant. Uh, et uh, ok, donc ça c'est ce qu'il y avait tout à l'heure. Uh, donc ça c'était les les résultats de trois kilomètres. Donc on attend les résultats du six kilomètres qui arriveront bientôt. Uh, je pense qu'il y a eu un petit changement au devant de la course, mais il y avait neuf filles qui étaient encore ensemble. Et on voit là que oh, maintenant, c'est une course à trois. Une course à trois euh, athlètes qui se sont complètement détachés du peloton. Yeah, this is exciting. This is exciting. With, with three, um, when, when three athletes take off, right? Because now you're, this is the podium, potentially, which you're watching. So it's nice that they're still, like, really, really, like, running together. And... Um, It will have the individual race and the uh, the team scores coming at you soon. The road to the Canada Life Vanier Cup continues next Saturday with the 2023 Mitchell Bowl as the Canada West champions, UBC Thunderbirds, host the AUS champion, Bishop's Gators, beginning at 3 p.m. Eastern, 12 p.m. Only on CBC Gem and CBC Sports.ca. La route vers la Coupe Vanier Canada Vie 2023 se poursuit samedi prochain avec la Coupe Mitchell en direct de Edmonton, euh, de, pardon, de Vancouver, quand les champions de la Coupe euh, de l'Atlantique, les euh, X-Men de saint effix s'opposeront aux Thunderbirds de UBC pour une place dans la Coupe Vanier Canada Vie, la Coupe Mitchell 2023, samedi dès 15h, heure de l'Est à TVA Sport. Et on a Catherine Beauchemin qui est encore au devant. Euh, donc, elle a complété le 6 km en 22 minutes 22 secondes. Katie Newlove de UBC Thunderbirds est en deuxième. Kyla Becker en troisième de UBC Thunderbirds aussi. Donc, c'est vraiment une course à trois dans la même seconde. En quatrième place, qui s'est détaché un peu à cinq secondes, on a Jennifer Erickson de UBC Thunderbirds. Tori Book de UBC euh, Okanagan qui est en 22-28. Chloe Couts de Western qui est en sixième place, Marley Beckett en septième place et Olivia Roussel de Western en 22-30. Donc, on a uh, UBC Thunderbirds uh, qui semble avoir pris une longueur d'avance sur les autres équipes en plaçant quatre athlètes dans le top 7. Yeah, so the UBC Thunderbirds are really, are really taking control of this race. We have, what, five in the top 12? Um, I, don't, I don't think you'd ever get... Yeah, if you're if you're fifth runners in 12th place, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna win the the U Sport Championships. Yeah, Western just is running really well. They have three in the top nine. Um, we got a we got a really close race for uh, for that top spot, right? So Catherine Beauchemin, Katie Newlove, Kyla Becker going at um, going going for that that individual prize. Uh, it, it it seems it has uh, spread out. They're kind of running in the shadows there. 
Et pour les équipes maintenant, euh, on a les Thunderbirds qui sont en première place avec 25 points. Donc, une très grande euh, longueur d'avance devant l'Université euh, Western qui a 56 points. Et la surprise, l'équipe euh, de, de, de Saint-François-Xavier euh, de Antigonish sont en troisième position. Et les Griffins de Guelph en quatrième et assez loin derrière euh, le Saint-Effix. Donc, euh, probablement qu'il va y avoir une grande surprise, là, Reed. Yes, you're right, Alex. This is a big surprise. So good, good work for the Saint Effex women, really coming in and peaking at the right time here, uh, sitting in solid third place. But UBC is running away with this. Um, that depth, just you know, five five women in the top 12. That's to get five all Canadians is is truly a, a, a huge feat here. And I um, think if we look at their seventh woman is in the the uh, 21st place. So lots of depth here. Oh wow, yeah, that that's incredible. Um, so let's get a, let's get a little. Who, who who is that in the lead? Catherine Beauchemin. It is okay. Yeah. So Laval Laval's Catherine Beauchemin, um, running very strong here uh, ahead of uh, these the the UBC women who are leading their team. Uh, I would say sometimes you know when you're when you're when you're running with the team uh, aspect, you know you might not want to risk uh, too much. Um, you know you don't want to blow up and maybe miss a few spots, but. I would say if, uh, if, if, if UBC is getting the, the, the info, info that they need, um, Katie New, Newlove and Kyla Becker have nothing to lose. They could fall back up many spots, and UBC is still wrapping up this uh, team championship. Catherine Beauchemin, par exemple, ne semble pas avoir été suivie par ses compatriotes euh, qui ne sont pas dans le top 30 en ce moment. Donc... Euh, euh, donc, euh, donc peut-être que euh, ça va être une, une petite déception au niveau là, de l'équipe Laval. Mais Catherine Beauchemin saura-t-elle réussir à remporter ce championnat 2023 de cross-country ici à London, en Ontario? C'est ce qu'on verra dans quelques secondes. Yeah, so this last one kilometer is a straight shot, right? So uh, sometimes it can be a little disheartening when you see people from far away, like, uh, uh, you know, that you can't catch, but... Um, it, it is really exciting as the, uh, the, the you'll see the fans are just going to start ramping up here. Et euh, pour vous les fans, euh, chers amis, vous pouvez partager la victoire de vos équipes préférées en vous procurant des vêtements de la collection des championnats U-Sport disponibles dès maintenant au shop.usport.ca. Les, parti les partisans des équipes gagnantes pourraient procurer des vêtements officiels de championnat euh, des différents championnats, mais cette collection exclusive est disponible pour un temps limité. Alors visitez shop.u.sport.ca dès aujourd'hui. All right, so just to go over, like 6K, um, 6K, some of the uh, the other runners that we haven't talked about that much, but Tori Bach from UBC Okanagan is still uh, running up there, um, as well as Rosalind Barrett from McMaster. So a couple of other, but, I mean, it's really, you know, uh, the, the teams we had talked about early on, uh, Laval, UBC, and Western, you know, have most of those top 10 spots. And, you know, I, I guess, uh, you know, St. Effects is really, really quite deep as well, considering... They're sitting in third place, and their top runner uh, at the 6K mark, Ali Sandluck, was 12th place. So, you know, they have a they have a, a great um, great pack running just a, just after that, like that big front um, pack. Et là, Catherine Beauchemin qui s'est complètement détachée s'envole vers la victoire. Euh, elle est environ à 50 mètres de la deuxième. Euh, donc, Catherine Beauchemin qui a stratégiquement bien fait, mais qui a presque couru du début jusqu'à la fin. Et ici, c'est une coureuse de l'Université de la Colombie-Britannique et qui a devancé Catherine Beauchemin. I'm going to guess that's Katie Newlove out there. Yeah, it, I think Kyla Becker has the short hair. Um, Katie Newlove has taken uh, over the lead uh, over Catherine Beauchemin. Um, as she comes closer, we'll d uh, double check that. But this is the final, like last few hundred meters here. The crowd's getting bigger. They all. And so it's going to be a UBC win here. They will win the top woman and probably the team championships as well. As you can see, uneven terrain you can break your legs a little bit as you're f trying to go as fast as possible the last few meters. Grueling 8K. So, bib 196. All right, here we go. We, Katie Newlove is going to be your 
2023 U-Sport Cross Country Champion, followed closely by Catherine Beauchemin from University of Laval. And then here we go. I think we have um, some more UBC runners. And, and here, and here comes the here comes a pack of uh, the you know the the clo like a lot of close competitors here to round out the oh, top wow. ten. They are they're coming in hot now. They're coming in quick. Lots of UBC. There's a, f a few Western runners coming through. And Santafix runners are coming in as well. There we go. Last sprints just before the line. And Kitty Newlove is your 2023 champion in cross country with a time of 29.06. Followed by Catherine Beauchemin de l'Université Laval Rouge et en 29.18. Et c'est Caitlin Harrison de la Saskatchewan qui remporte la troisième place en 29 minutes 25. Caitlin, what a surprise. She came third at uh, Ken West Conference, but here she definitely peaked perfectly to uh, steal that bronze medal. Yeah, I mean, she was only 25th here last year, but she was fifth in 2021. So good to see her, you know, rebound um, and, and finish in, in third place to catch that, uh, that, that final spot on the podium. Uh -huh. uh, So, uh, Eileen ben Benoit from St. FX, she really moved up in, in the last couple K of that race. So, St. FX puts a, a runner in fourth place. That's going to really help their team score as well. Holly McGilvery from UBC, Olivia Russell from Western, uh, Ali Sandluck from St. FX, uh, Marley Beckett from uh, UBC in eighth. We got Emily Doucette um, in, in ninth. Uh, no, Marley. So, Eri so Erica Jordan actually finished oh, third. Um, that was, that's, that that was a mistake here. Yeah. So, uh, so Erica Jordan. So, yeah, Erica Jordan finished third. Caitlin Harrison fourth. Um, oh, okay. Sorry that she didn't come through on the uh, preliminary results. We got uh, rounding out like some of the uh, other all Canadian spots. We got Emily Doucette, Rachel Mortimer, Kyla Becker, and Tori Buck right ahead of uh, 15th for uh, Caitlin. Uh, Rosalind Barrett. And we have the team winners on the screen here. So UBC takes the honors uh, in first place with 35 points, finishing 1, 5th, 7th, 10th, and 12th. And Western Mustang, not a surprise. They finished second. It's 70 points. Uh, oh, and we have Santa Fix women who are coming in Yeah, Third I, th I place. think they're still calculating some of these uh, these these scores as they come in, but you know we can rest assured uh, it looks like 35 points for UBC, um, just like we saw last year on the men's side with uh, McMaster with 37 points. 35 points is very low score for cross country. Uh, it's uh, it, it, that was a that was a huge that was a huge win. So you know um, they were ranked number one coming in and they proved it. And I think I think last year coming second. Um, Uh, by one point, uh, I'm, I'm going to guess they were super motivated to get that t uh, that team championship this year. And uh, here's another uh, here's another view of the uh, the individual runners. So uh, Erica Jordan's chip maybe just uh, didn't quite uh, catch it to catch the finish line in here. But um, so we actually have Erica Jordan in third and Jennifer Erickson in fourth. Um, so a couple, maybe you know, just maybe a couple, a little glitch there, but yeah, we did see the Western and the UBCs come in, so it does make sense now, uh, kind of what we're seeing. But um, uh, we're also uh, getting that Caitlin uh, Harrison was fifth, and and maybe some of the Saint FX uh, runners uh, are going to get are going to get switched around, right? Because now they're saying Marion Cannon in uh, Canning in sixth, um, Saint FX eighth, uh, Eileen Eileen uh, Benoit. Um, But we can see um, that Erica Jordan, Jennifer Erickson, and Caitlin Erickson had a tremendous last part, portion of the race. Uh, they moved up from uh, 11 place, places for Erica Jordan. She, uh, er Jennifer Erickson moved up 10 places, and Caitlin Harrison 14 places, 14 spots. So that's that was a really good finish for them. Yeah, 14 spots in the last two kilometers. Um, I mean that that just shows like that pack and like the team scores could have really changed um, in the last 2K if if an athlete's if an athlete's in a place to move up 14 spots but you know UBC held those those spots really um, that really strongly and you know coming uh, obviously coming through with the the low stick one point that always helps I mean UBC had first and third last year and yet they they still didn't win but you know when you're um, 
when you're when you're was it sixth runner is is 14th for UBC um, that to have I, 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 I you have to check the stats I, I can't remember a, a team ever having six um, all, all, for, uh, six all Canadians right so like last year uh, McMaster with 37 points on the men's side you know they, they, they had their, their fifth was 16th place so um, sixth in the top 14 uh, you know kudos to UBC that is a very very strong team. Then we got the Western Mustang finished third, ninth, seventeenth, nineteenth, twenty-six, and they have their sixth uh, runner in fifty-first place. Uh, and then Cenefix still third uh, as a group. Uh, we haven't seen uh, an AUS team in a long time on the podium as a team, in at U Sports. So I think they, they will just they have uh, they have everything to be proud of. Finishing sixth, seventh, tenth, thirty-first, and thirty-second. Then in fourth place, the McMaster Marauders. S fifth place, the Victoria Vikes. Sixth place, Guelph Griffins. Maybe a little bit of a, uh, a bump there, uh, a bummer there. Guelph Griffins uh, were expected to be a little higher on the list. Um, Queens Gale uh, finished seventh. They had one OUAs. Uh, they had finished third at OUA, so I think uh, this is a good place for them. Uh, Saskatchewan Huskies, eighth. Uh, ninth, it was uh, U. NB Red, so AUS coming in the top, another team from AUS coming in the top 10, and Sherbrooke, Le Verrier de Sherbrooke finishing in 10th place uh, as a team. Okay, so what's interesting here is, um, uh, you know, we thought Laval would be up there, and I, 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 don't, see, I don't see him in the top 10. Definitely um, something happened with Laval. There was only Catherine Beauchemin that was in yeah. the top 20. So great run from Catherine Beauchemin. Um, yeah, so Saint Effects, I, I would say, is the big surprise today. You know, UBC... Um, I st I'm, I'm still really, really impressed with their running, but, you know, they were ranked first going in. Um, Sane Effects, uh, they weren't on my radar. Sorry, uh, Eric Gillis is a, a good friend of mine. Uh, he's the coach there. <laughs> I'll have to apologize to him later that uh, uh, I didn't talk up his team quite enough. But, um, you know, interestingly enough, right, uh, third place, uh, Sane Effects, coached by Eric Gillis, uh, Olympian. McMaster, coached by Paula Schnur, then fourth, uh, also an Olympian with uh, Matt Hughes as the assistant coach, and uh, Victoria Vikes sitting there in fifth place, uh, also coached by um, uh, Olympian uh, Hillary Stellingworth. So um, Eric, and Eric does have good experience on this course as well. He ran the, the 2022 uh, at the time CS Cross Country Championship. So, you know, they, they came out here in September. Uh, they learned the course well. Um, I think they did their homework. They went back, went back out east, and 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 maybe visualized the course and and, and knew how to run this thing, and um, came back with a, a huge with a huge result. And Centifix won uh, AUS championships two weeks ago, but to come back and finish third at nationals, I think Eric had uh, worked a bit of his magic there. I think he got lucky. <laughs> that's, uh, that's just so Eric can rewatch this and get a good chuckle out of my. Uh, digging at him but yeah kudos uh kudos to eric for sure um yeah so i, I like you know there's I, I really just can't get over the depth of ubc that's to to lose their first and third runner from last year uh glenna sim and uh kiana gibson um and you know and, and come back and even have a deeper year uh this year uh very very impressive so um yeah if we look at so some of the uh the, the results um that are coming through like um maybe there's just some computer glitches but we'll go over some of the stuff because it has changed a little bit when you're looking at the, the back half but um because uh uh so we'll, we'll just go let's go through the, let's go through yep. the all canadians because now it's a bit more um official uh, I wouldn't say official, but more official than we were looking at two minutes ago here. So Katie Newlove uh, from UBC, Catherine Beauchemin from Laval, Erica Jordan Western in fourth place, Jennifer Erickson, UBC, in fifth place, Caitlin Harrison from Saskatchewan, in sixth place, Marin Canning from St. Effects, seventh, Eileen Benoit from St. Effects, eighth, Holly McGilvery from UBC, ninth, Olivia Russell from uh, Western, 10th, Ali Sandluck from St. Effects. 11th, Marley Beckett from UBC. 12th, Emily Doucette from UNB. 13th, Rosalind Barrett from McMaster. And 14th, Tori Buck from UBC. So, um, UBC, uh, sorry, UBC Okanagan in four, 14th place there. So, UBC actually didn't have six All-Canadians. Rachel Mortimer was 15th and Kyla Becker 16th. Not to take anything away from it because when you're 
six runner is 16th place, you're going to win the U Sport uh, championships. But um, yeah, those those two last UBC runners, they're fifth and sixth, um, bumped out of the uh, the all Canadian list from a uh, list we were looking at about a few minutes ago. So I think uh, we've had a really good race uh, on the women's side, and we are expected the same on the men's side. Uh, probably a few surprises as well. Yeah, yeah, and that's and that's why we run these races, right? Uh, we have the uh, the coaches pull, and we get to see the individual results throughout the year. But you know, let's let's match everybody head to head on the same course and see how it all plays out. Um, yeah, really. Uh, Really fun race today. Watching this, I think the men's race also has um, some some close matchups, some so some different firepower up front and dip, and, and teams that come with come in with depth. Um, you know, we we were expecting Laval to 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 have some runners up front, and they did. Um, but the you know the the just the sheer numbers of people in between their first runner and their second runner um, put them out of the race really quickly. And uh, the first runner from Guelph King 17, that was Julia Agostinelli. Um, we might have expected a bit more from the team, um, but they are rebuilding. And, you know, we run those races to see those surprises. And yep. who comes the most prepared today uh, definitely has uh, and, and run gutsy. That, that, that pays off on a day like this. A beautiful day here in London, Ontario. Yep. Yeah, Julia. All right, so that pretty much wraps up the uh, women's portion of the uh, U-Sport 2023 cross Country Championships at London. And stay tuned because the men's race is coming up. ressemble votre vie, vous pouvez compter sur nous, pour la vie comme vous la vivez. Assurance, placement, conseil. Canada Vie. It's that moment again, the one you dream of every night. La seule chose qui te préoccupe, c'est la gloire. Le cheminement de la réussite, of pushing yourself further than ever before. But the true glory is in the shadows. Le sacrifice que tu fais Quand toutes les chances sont contre toi When you can't push one more second Chase the glory Viseo Welcome back to the 2023 U-Sport Cross Country Championships here from Thames Valley Golf Course in London, Ontario. We just saw an incredible uh, race from the women, uh, 8K Cross Country. The men are about to get going with 8K Cross Country as well. Um, we have, uh, once again, we have some really cool storylines, uh, a lot of a lot of good athletes, a lot of great athletes lining up here Um Uh, I, I, are we going to get going right away on the uh, the course, or should we talk about the uh, the competitors? We'll play, we'll play the course. Start of the course overview. We're going to do a run through. Okay. All Donc right. euh, vraiment euh, une super course de la part euh, du côté de, du côté des femmes, et euh, nous avons eu quelques surprises dans euh, la troisième position par équipe euh, de l'équipe de Saint François Xavier. 
l'équipe de l'Université de la Colombie-Britannique a complètement dominé aujourd'hui. Ils ont eu euh, les euh, cinq premières dans le top, euh, dans le top 14. C'est extrêmement bon. Et ils ont eu la victoire aussi du côté individuel avec Katie Newlove. Et euh, pour compléter le podium, il y a eu Catherine Beauchemin et Erica Jordan. Donc, on va avoir beaucoup de choses à dire du côté masculin aussi. Et euh, on va se rendre euh, à, à l'écran. On va aller voir euh, le parcours euh, de 8 km. Euh, donc, c'est une boucle de 5 km et ensuite une boucle de euh, 3 km qui va euh, nous euh, apporter jusqu'au fil d'arrivée. Donc, on peut voir ici en accéléré. Euh, c'est un parcours qui est assez plat. Euh, c'est un terrain de golf. Donc, on voit ici en accéléré tout ce qui se passe. Ça ne semble pas comme ça, mais c'est très bossu. Donc, vous avez, vous avez vu rapidement ce qui se passe euh, du côté de, du terrain de golf. Euh, quelques petites côtes très abruptes, mais sinon une course euh, qui se va se jouer de façon très rapide. It's so nice out there, uh, Reed Coulsett. Um, what are we expecting on the men's side? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, great weather today here. Um, and uh, yeah, we got, we got huge, we had big team battles again, right? So um, Laval's had a really strong team the past bunch of years. Um, they are they are ranked number one in our coaches' pool. UBC ranked number two. Um, we just saw their women perform really well, so maybe uh, that's going to um, that, you know that's going to motivate them to, uh, to to maybe keep up with what the women were doing. Laval, you know, ranked number one. Maybe they're they're saying, okay, we got to come up with some sort of team podium here. Uh, Guelph ranked three, Queens and fourth. So Guelph and Queens really close battle at OU's. Um, we could see a much different result if uh, Queens uh, has all their firepower. Uh, we'll talk about that in a bit. UNB, it's uh, nice to see a different team from uh, uh, the AUS. So AUS typically, St. FX and Dalhousie are their, their strongest team. So UNB ranked fifth in, in the nation. We saw it with the St. FX women surprise everyone for third place. So, you know, maybe UNB is going to uh, uh, maybe perform better than fifth. Um, host team, Western, uh, ranked sixth. Um, tied with Victoria, Toronto 8th, St. FX in 9th. Does, uh, can St. FX men uh, prove to, to peak uh, much better um, than, than a 9th place finish? And 10th uh, is uh, Université of Sherbrooke, uh, where um, Mr. Genet, Alex Genet, started his uh, cross-country career as a, as a rookie finishing with 2nd place. Donc, euh, oui, c'est ça. J'ai commencé euh, à, à Sherbrooke euh, il y a, en 2006. Donc, ça commence à faire longtemps, Reed. Euh, donc, on voit ici euh, le, euh, les différents athlètes qui participeront euh, aux euh, 8 km du côté masculin. Jean-Simon Degagné euh, qui sera euh, le, probablement le meneur. On verra quest ce qui va arriver. David Girardin, Alexis Lepage, un Olympien en triathlon. Euh, Philippe Morneau-Cartier, Pierre-Yves Normandin, Rudy Salle et Jonathan Tedeschi une équipe très forte du côté de Laval. Euh, on va voir que euh, Jonathan Tedeschi, lui, euh, euh, est, en sa, est à sa cinquième année et euh, il, euh, il, il a fait une maîtrise en philosophie. Euh, C'est un coureur de long. Jonathan est euh, spécialiste du 10 000 mètres sur piste, donc euh, son meilleur temps est de 29 minutes 27. L'année dernière, il n'avait pas compétitionné à ce championnat, mais il a fini 11e en 2021 et euh, 17e en 2019. Et euh, il a terminé deuxième cette année, l'année dernière quand il est participé à cette course ici euh, sur le, le parcours euh, du euh, de golf de Thames Valley. Euh, il a terminé deuxième cette année euh, au championnat de conférence euh, qui se tenait sur les plaines d'Abraham. Euh, derrière, Philippe Morneau-Cartier, qui est l'autre très bon coureur euh, du Rouge et qui a gagné les championnats, euh, les championnats provinciaux de cross-country. Il est indéfait cette saison. Et là, à l'écran, vous voyez l'homme de la situation, Jean-Simon Desgagnés, qui étudie en médecine et qui est un athlète de steeplechase. Il a terminé, écoutez ça, huitième au monde au steeplechase. Il a fait le record québécois en 8 minutes 15. Euh, il vient tout juste de gagner la médaille d'or au jeu panaméricain à Santiago, Chili, qui est revenu juste lundi dernier. Donc, il a eu le temps de faire quelques entraînements et euh, il est arrivé à, euh, à London en grande forme. Donc, euh, Jean-Simon Desgagnés, Philippe Morneau-Cartier, Jonathan 
Montedeschi seront des athlètes à surveiller pour l'Université Laval. Donc, euh, nous avons aussi euh, les, les athlètes de l'Université de Guelph. Um, Guelph Griffins, uh, that would uh, be able to definitely prove their team. And, um, so one thing I really like with that Laval team you just presented there was not only are they like really talented, but they have a lot of experience here at U Sports. So moving, yeah, moving on to UBC, this is an interesting team. Um, Andrew Davies, you might re remember him from last year. He finished third. So as we just said, um, you know, uh, uh, Laval had the second place runner. Andrew Davies was third last year, running for McMaster. So he he is a, a definitely a contender for the title here. Um, just like the women's race, the men's race does not have a returning champion. So we're going to see a new champion. Max Turek um, from last year has graduated, um, and uh, Andrew Davies uh, you know, is, is, he's got some really fast uh, 5K times and uh, coming off of um, the the Can West Championship, so he won there, so he's, he's in good form. Um, he's backed up by um, another transfer, uh, so transfer from Guelph. Uh, so, you know, Andrew Davies and John Perry, they know this course well, having run for McMaster and John from Guelph. John was 5th and 11th at these championships back in 2021 and 2019. Uh, last year he was 19th, so not as good as he uh, – He had been, um, but he is looks like to be in good form again this year, placing second at the Can West Championship. So look for John Perrier and Andrew Davies to be really like you know to have like they, I mean they, these these are guys who could be you know looking for a podium at least top five, and um, th they're backed up by um, actually the third place at the Can West Championships is Jai Vier Tawana. So uh, Jai is from uh, Surrey, and uh, you know he was only 37th here last year, but. Um, I think he's stepped up a lot just looking at his Can West uh, performance at third place. Um, so UBC, you know, they're sitting with uh, three three strong uh, runners. And, you know, where their fourth and fifth runner um, place is, is really going to be the, the, the tail if, if they can uh, take this championship or not. Now we will be moving on to the Guelph Griffin this time. And uh, the front runner. Uh, there's a few good runners here. They won OUAs two weeks ago, and their uh, front runner should be Nick Bannon. Uh, Max Davies came second at OUAs. Third is Jack Letho, and um, a few uh, really good athletes here. Uh, Nick Bannon uh, won OUAs last uh, two weeks ago, uh, and he was also the athlete of the week uh, on the week three. So he's had a really strong season in cross country. He finished second last year at the U Track U Sport Track and Field Championships in Saskatchewan, um, and he also um, has a PB of 3:44 in the 1500. So never count him out. Yeah, and even faster than uh, than Nick in the 1500. Max Davies actually has a PB of uh, 3:41. So he's a transfer from Iona, who uh, I think I would say he struggled last year at, at U Sports Cross Country, but Um, finishing second at the OUA conference this um, two weeks ago shows that he's in great cross country shape. So he's he's gonna you know he's he's gonna be looking for a podium uh, today as well. Um, him and Nick really need to lead this team um, for for a good team result. And then uh, you know next uh, on the Guelph team, uh, Rowan uh, Nabatsing. So he was sixth at OUAs. He doesn't have um, prior uh, U Sport championship experience. So. Um, you know, Nick's, Nick's in his fifth year, but uh, the rest of the team is, is fairly young. Um, they're looking to build back up, and but but they're strong enough to be contenders. So, um, yeah, we got a lot of close teams here on the men's side. Um, uh, and, and talking about close teams, yeah. the next team that we'll present is Queens. Uh, there's going to be uh, number one, Miles Brackenbury. Uh, Will Cox, Tanner Hewling, Roman Mironov, Ethan Rashid Cocker, Angus Skinner, Jude Wheeler D. So, right. so another, uh, so Jude Wheeler D. Actually, didn't finish at the OUA Championships. He's one of their top runners. Um, talking to uh, Coach Mark Bamba, 
Uh, it was just a it was just a one off sort of cramp. He actually he's he's not injured. He's in good shape. So uh, it, you know if 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 Queens has their top three, they 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 are right in the thick of things. So um, ex, you know expect Jude Wheeler D to bounce back from uh, DNF at OUAs. Um, he was 18th here last year, so he knows how to run U Sport Cross. Um, Roman Miranoff, he he did have a strong OUA performance in fourth place. Um, and he, he was 21st here last year, so uh, good, some, you know, once again, like a good experience. And then Miles Brackenberry. So um, Miles is, uh, he's, he's a team captain, I believe, um, uh, fourth year. And, he, and he's a guy that's really stepped up from uh, last year. So his last two U Sport outings were 33rd and 43rd. I expect him to, uh, to, to really go for a, an all-Canadian top 14 here. Um, he was fifth at the OUA championship, so he is he, he's having the season of his life um, compared to the last couple of years. And you know he's a guy who's put in the hard work over the years, um, and, uh, and and is ready to uh, help lead Queens into uh, potentially a podium team finish today. Donc plusieurs athlètes qui sont euh, en liste pour le podium. Donc, Jean Simon Degagné va probablement être sur le podium avec Philippe Morneau Cartier, mais on a John Perrier et on a aussi Jude Wheeler D. Donc, euh, ça va être une course assez enlevante et on va y revenir après les, les annonces publicitaires. Yeah, you go. They don't do it for the likes or for the shares. They do it for the fun of it, for the thrill, for the camaraderie, for the memories. CBC Sports, just because they love it. Welcome back to the 2023 U-Sport Cross Country Championships on CBC.ca. Uh, we're here in London, Ontario at the Thames Valley Golf course this is a a race hosted by the western mustangs um we are about five minutes away from the start of the men's 8k you can see all the teams they are gathering they are doing their final strides they are getting ready to go this is a this is a wonderful day last year we had rain in halifax and and today we have sunny skies it's a bit brisk but when you're running 8k you're producing a lot of heat the runners love these conditions. So we just went through the, the top teams. Um, a lot of the top individuals also belong to these top teams. But another, uh, a few more individuals we'd like to point out who's, uh, you know, their, their teams aren't, um, uh, aren't going to be up there contending for a podium per se. But uh, we got from the Dalhousie Tigers, we got Jacob Benoit. So Jacob um, transfer from uh, St. FX, uh, but he finished first at the uh, Atlantic conferences. So at AUS, he was he was um, he he won that. But last year, he was 11th at the U uh, Sport Championship. So he he's, he's an all he's a returning all Canadian. He was running for Saint FX last year. He's running for Dow this year. Um, but expect him to be up in the mix too. You know, if uh, you know, as we saw, McMaster lost. Um, uh, all their guys. I mean, Andrew Davies is still running um, for UBC, but the rest of their team. So uh, they ha um, expect a lot of these guys to move up. So another one uh, from out east as well. He finished second at the uh, AUS conference. This is Jared Howes from UNB, so University of New Brunswick. He was eighth last year here, right? So, you know, eighth is, you know, obviously a really good uh, finishing position, but with a lot of those guys like Max Turek, um, and and Alex Drover um, not in uh, not in the the race this year. Um, you know, somebody like Jared could could be you know up in the top five and don't you know do, I wouldn't count him out from like challenging for a podium position. Um, the podium is going to be super super hard here this this year with the, with the level of talent that we have. Um, and then and of course we have a we have a couple of uh, top runners here from the host team Western Mustangs. We have Ben Fox. Um, he was 41st uh, at the at the championships last year, um, and he was 14th this year at the OUA championships. And a fun, uh, interesting fact: uh, Ben Fox ran the Boston Marathon uh, last uh, April, and he ran in a 
time of 2.32.04. So he's a long-distance guy. Yeah, okay, wow. Um, it took me about 10 years uh, to run a marathon since I, uh, <laughs> since I was running uh, on the Thames Valley Go- Golf Country course here. So, And Marcel Scheel uh, is, is, is another top runner here uh, from the host Western Mustangs. He was seventh at the OUA uh, Championships. And, and he's run really well here at the U Sports Championships in past years, finishing 20th and 19th in the past two uh, editions. So, um, yeah, like a lot of a lot of cool stuff. Um, Jean Simon de Gagné, um, it's going to be really, be really interesting to see how he rebounds off the, that win at Pan Am Championships. And and whose uh, Quebec steeple record did he take? Uh, mine. He took mine. <laughs> All right, here we go. And commercial we're looking break. forward to see that race in uh, after the short commercial. chose qui te préoccupe, c'est la gloire, le cheminement de la réussite, of pushing yourself further than ever before, but the true glory is in the shadows, le sacrifice que tu fais, quand toutes les chances sont contre toi, when you can't push one more second, chase the glory, visez au Here, watching the 2023 U Sport Cross Country Championships on CBC. En direct de London, Ontario, vous écoutez les championnats de cross country U Sport à CBC Sport. En ce moment, vous voyez les hommes sont sur le départ, prêts à à, 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 à y aller pour le 8 km. Euh, donc, euh, une course qui va durer environ 24 minutes euh, dans ce soleil splendide aujourd'hui. Une journée parfaite pour le cross country. Euh, il y aura un championnat par équipe et un championnat individuel. Donc, euh, on voit les équipes qui sont alignées. L'équipe de Laval, qui était les cheveux teints en blond, et Jean-Simon Degagné, qui s'installe. Yeah, here we got the teams lined up. We see UBC with that's uh, Andrew Davies. Uh, with the blue headband. He is one of the favorites today. He was third here last year. We have Philippe Morneau, um, Cartier. He, Cartier, and he was second here last year. So we have those two guys plus Jean-Simon de Gagné. Um, they, they are, they're probably the three that we're going to look for the most, but there's always surprises at these cross-country championships. Um, Jean-Simon, obviously in great shape, as we said earlier, coming off that Pan Am win. Um, but we, you know, will the travel and, and everything sort of uh, get in his way, or, or is he just like on this great peak where um, you know he's just on top of the world? Well, we're we're about to find out. We're gonna get going really soon. They are just steady on the line. We're waiting for the uh, starters gun. Once they bend over, we know they are about ready to go. All the all the fans lined up. Most of them are on the right hand side there. That is so they can quickly run up and see them see all the runners again as they pass about 400 meters into the race so get out hard here because in 250 meters this race bottlenecks a little bit and has a sharp right hand turn um, uh, with this little hill so 
You see some of these guys are starting and their we're watches. Off. Here we go. All right, 8K men's U Sport Cross Country Championships are underway. Look how fast they are going. Um, this is not a pace uh, they're going to sustain for that long, but they want to establish posi positions early, right? They want to that you you want to like get with your team, get get that. Oh, look at that. Um, Jean Simon's got that that blonde hair, as uh, Alex already said in French there. The, they uh, that hopefully make our job a little easier picking out the Laval <laughs> team with their with their new dues. Um, Andrew Davies helps us out with that blue headband. Last year it was a maroon headband uh, running for the McMaster Marauders as they absolutely destroyed the the U Sport competition. Just as we saw UBC do it as well. Uh, McMaster had. Uh, six, uh, f their fifth runner was 16th uh, last year. They had four. They had four guys who could break 14 minutes. They absolutely destroyed, and they are returning zero of those seven guys to the McMaster team. Andrew Davies running for UBC. The rest of the guys have have graduated. That's and just as we thought, Jean Simon de Gagne and uh, Andrew Davies are out front with. Um, who was that third runner? Was that a, a Guelph runner? I think it might have been Nick Bannon. Nick Bannon is also a runner uh, who going for that, that top individual position. Nick actually beat um, uh, Andrew Davies early on in the season on this course at the uh, – at the um, – at the, uh, the I, I wanted to call it the Western Vigors, Invite, Vigors and the, Salter yeah, the Vigors Western and Salter, Invitational. Yeah, uh, Invitational, which yeah, have been renamed since uh, the days that I was running it. Uh, Bob Vigors, who uh, longtime coach at Western and is been the main guy helping uh, put on this meet. Um, he, he, he runs a tight ship. This course has a lot of history on it. It's really neat to see the, the first 5K just as it was uh, all these years. So, you know, tightly, tightly bunched. Um, I see uh, some of the some of the Guelph runners there. Um, you know, the, the, uh, over 100 runners here in the race. Um, you know, if if you're sitting if you're sitting in 70th if you're sitting in 70th place right now, uh, it might feel a long way back, but it's really only a few seconds back from first place at this point. So, as we were talking about, Max Turek graduated from that McMaster team. He won here. in uh, 2022, Mitch Ubeen back in 2021, COVID. Um, and there was a UBC athlete. So again, quite some diversity in the top men yeah, over so, the years. Yeah, so the here's an interesting stat I, I looked up here, Alex. Um, you might enjoy this one. So in the past uh, six championships, we've seen five different teams win here. Um, versus from 1994 to 2015, that 22-year span, there was only three teams on the men's side who won the championships. It was Windsor, Victoria, and Guelph. So three teams had a monopoly for 22 years in the past six championships, so seven years because of COVID. So the past six championships, we've seen five different teams. So um, things are mixing up. They're exciting. We are about uh, one kilometer into this uh, 8K course, and it's I would, it's a bit more stretched out. Um, so once again, we're talking about that, those teams. We had McMaster win last year, Laval the year before. COVID before that, and then Calgary um, winning two in a row. Um, and yeah, so the, the, and the, Calgary this year are don't they don't have a team uh, here at London. So um, in university, this is uh, something special because every five years, usually you have a big turnover because athletes can stay in the same team for five years, and then there's a turnover, and it's really hard for teams to stay on top because there's such a big turnover. Uh, within their teams. Yeah, yeah, we see you know, new teams all the time. So we're going to go over the course elevation again. So this graphic looks like this, you're climbing mountains here, but really it's only about a 30 meter um, total elevation gain, or sorry, like uh, from the lowest point to the highest point on this course, but they are actually approaching that highest point right now. So you got the, you got this, you got some rollers. Um, and like I said before in the, in the women's race, this is a golf course, but you're not actually running on the fairways, right? So you're running off to the side. It's actually quite lumpy. Um, it's, I mean, it is fast, right? It's, it's packed down grass. It's not wet. We, we've, we haven't had a lot of rain lately, but, um, it's, it's, it's not, it's not a smooth fairway, right? So it, it is cross country running and we are seeing it spread out more than we saw the women's race so here we go it's like i think that's nick bannon way out, uh who, who's got a little bit of a lead right now but even the top 20 is is quite um is quite spread out uh for only being 1.5k into this race 
The road to the Canada Life Vanier Cup continues next Saturday when the OUA champion Western Mustangs travel to La Belle Province to take on the RSEQ Dunsmore Cup champion Montreal Carabin in the 2023 UTEC Bowl. The road to the Canada Life Vanier Cup and the 2023 UTEC Bowl next Saturday at 12 p.m. Eastern on CBC Gem and CBC Sports.ca. La route vers la Coupe Vanier Canada Vie 2023 se poursuit samedi prochain avec la Coupe UTEC en direct du Sepsum de Montréal. Euh, quand l'université de Western voyage dans la belle province pour la demi-finale du football universitaire et rencontreront les Carabins de Montréal. La Coupe UTEC 2023, samedi prochain, dès midi, heure de l'Est à TVA Sport. All right, back here with the action here. We are seeing, um, I, I would say it's, it's, it's got to be a fast pace uh, right off the gun. Um, just, just looking at how spread out these runners are. We're still early on the race. You can tell um, at this course there are uh, a lot of spectators that, that you can see a lot of vantage points um, in the first couple K, and then it gets a little, little lonelier out um, in the in the back half of this first 5K loop. But luckily, we have the 3K uh, timing, uh, Matt. So. We are going to be able to uh, get you some some accurate uh, individual and then eventually team scores from that 3K mat that's going to is coming up in uh, just about one kilometer from now. You know, look at all the fans uh, running around. Fans, you too can celebrate each U Sports team gold medal with your very own commemorative apparel from T Litson Sports. Check out shop usports.ca. Tuesday afternoon for the exclusive U Sports Champions Collection. But hurry, supplies will go fast on this limited time offer. That's U Sports Championship Collection on sale Tuesday exclusively at shop.usports.ca. Donc on revient avec Max Davis qui est euh, définitivement en avance et Philippe Bonneau-Cartier de l'Université Laval qui se tient tout juste derrière Max Davis. Euh, on avait deux coureurs de l'Université de la Colombie-Britannique au devant. On peut voir qu'il euh, y a un petit peloton qui s'est détaché d'environ 10 coureurs au devant et là euh, on est à euh, la, environ 2 km 3, 2 km 5. Euh, euh, et donc, euh, la course, ça va vite. Ça semble être un très bon rythme au devant de la course. Oh, yeah. This, th these guys are flying. Um, I mean, Andrew, Andrew Davies is an aggressive runner, so we're seeing him push. That, that's a University of Victoria. I think that's Damien out there as well. Philippe Morneau-Cartier, I'm going to go with PMC from now on. So PMC, Andrew Davies, Nick Bannon, uh, Damien from uh, Victoria are pushing this, this, this fast pace um, er, early on here in the SAK yeah, race. We saw a few blonde hair uh, guys uh, running in the front, so Laval is definitely there. Euh, les meilleures équipes du soccer féminin se rencontrent cet après-midi en grande finale canadienne en direct de Kingston, en Ontario. C'est le match pour la médaille d'or qui euh, sera disputé entre les Thunderbirds de UBC et les Spartans de l'Université Trinity Western. Euh, pour la médaille d'or au championnat de soccer féminin U-Sport, suivez l'action en direct dès 15h à Radio-Canada Sport. The best of women's university soccer square off today at 3 p.m. Eastern as UBC Thunderbirds take on Trinity Western Spartans. University gold at the 2023 U-Sports Women's Soccer Championship from Queen's University in Kingston. Only on cbcsports.ca and CBC Gem. All right, so that was, um, again, that was Daniel Damien from, uh, from UVic mixing it up with with the uh, runners that we were already talking about, Max, um, sorry, Andrew Davies, Nick Bannon, uh, Philippe Morneau-Cartier, PMC. And we also saw Jean-Simon Degagné hanging in there. Jean-Simon uh, has a, a good kick uh, because uh, his 1500 meter time is pretty good. Yes, I uh, believe it's, it's under 340. I believe it's 338 off of memory here. He's ran 338 last summer and uh, he's also ran 815 for steeplechase. So he's a little bit at the back right now, back of the lead pack, but uh, I don't think it's going to be a big problem for him to start uh, the sprint. So there we go. That's the three K. That's the three K mark. You can see the timing. So we're going to see a bunch of a uh, bunch of stats that we're going to is going to help us, uh, you know, distinguish who's in this top ten here. So um, yeah, like uh, we said, we got Andrew Davies, uh, Daniel Damien, Philippe Morneau Cartier, Miles Brackenberry from Queens uh, is up there. Thomas Lavoyette. So we haven't talked about him yet. He's from the 
des moteurs carabins, Nick Bannon, John Perrier, Jean-Simon Daguin. They gain, uh, Max Davies, Jude Wheeler D, and Roman uh, Minerov. So we have we have three Queens athletes in the top eleven. So Queens has given a good run here. Um, you know, will where, where will Will Cox and and the rest of the Queens team um, give back up to these top three? Is is going to be uh, the game changer as far as you know the the team title goes? And only four seconds uh, are separating the first to the twentieth guy. So really, it's still a tight race. But uh, I'm impressed by Queen's run so far, um, staying together and making sure that they can get a medal uh, uh, as a team here. So there we go. So Queen's, uh, the Queen's Golden Gales are out front with 69 points ahead of Laval Rouge et So it's still a very tight team. UBC and Guelph, they are all in the thing. Those four teams... Um, you know, only being separated there, it looks like by about 30 points, um, is, is really not much at all. As we saw in the women's race, um, some of these athletes are making up 10 spots in the last 2K. Um, we're not quite as tightly packed as the women's race, but it, team, team scores can vary widely, uh, you know, from a 3K point to the to the finish 8K here. So, yeah, Matt, uh, Andrew Davies still leading this race. Um, and he, Jared House as well from UNB is in that pack. Have you seen how Mono Cartier seems so relaxed? Uh, yes, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. But uh, it seemed in control for this race. And I was talking to Félix Antoine Lapointe, his coach, and he said that he has his mindset to win the gold medal today after finishing second last year. Yeah, he's in, he's in a great position to win this race right now. Um, yeah, I was talking to Mark Bamba, the, uh, the Queen's uh, coach. So... Um, Jude Wheeler D, who did not finish at OU's, um, is that is not an injury, and he's proving that right now. He's he's running up there. So we got Nick Bannon, PMC, and Andrew Davies are the top three right now, pushing pushing a pack of what is it, like at least 15 athletes there before you see a bit of a, a bit of a gap um, for the, for the for the rest of the field. So reading, uh, coming back to Jean Simon, who just traveled from Chile uh, this week after a big win at Pan Am, and he fell in the water jump. How would you uh, think he? What, what do you think he has done this week to recover fully for this race? That's a good question. I, yeah, I think coming off of a, a Pan Am win, he's he's done a couple cross country races already this season. So really, you don't have to do much um, if you if you're in that kind of shape and you know you only have a week to race. You're really just looking to like you know recover, just run a little bit, and, and just hone it in. I mean, I don't know. I don't know about you, Alex, but if I have finished, if I had finished eighth in the world. Um, at the World Championships, as Jean Simon did last year, um, I would I would really be trying to win this race. If you think of like eighth, eighth place in the world, you're like, okay, what what, what can I do here in uh, London, Ontario? I think you're 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 right, but he wants to win, so he needs to put himself in the position. Uh, we'll see if he can do that. Uh, at we are about at 4K right now. Um, et la grande finale de soccer masculin aura lieu cet après-midi dès 13h, heure de l'Est, aux ondes de Radio-Canada Sport. Suivez toute l'action de la finale du championnat de soccer masculin Protocase U Sport, présenté par Bell, exclusivement en français à Radio-Canada, Baroplique Sport. After today's races, head over to CBC Sports U Sports. Men's Soccer Stream for the gold medal match at the Proto Case U Sports Men's Soccer Championship, presented by Bell from Cape Breton University in Sydney, Nova Scotia. The gold medal game gets underway at 1 p.m. Eastern on CBC Gem and CBCSports.ca. All right, back here with the action. Look at this field, really strong out. This is 8K, grueling cross country. Um, some of you are wondering what, what shoes are they wearing? They, all these athletes have spikes on um, the super shoe phenomenon that we have seen on the roads and on the track doesn't really take place. Uh, doesn't doesn't really do a difference here because um, the ground's the ground's soft enough that you're not going to compress that foam the same way. So they they are in pretty s minimal spikes. Well, we got a little guy out here on the course. Um, that must be a rookie from uh, one of the schools. But um, yeah, the, you need what you need here is grip, right? So you have five millimeter millimeter. Uh, seven or nine millimeter pins today. Um, here we go. We got Andrew Davies, Philippe Morneau Cartier, Nick Bannon, Jared Howes. We got, we got a few Queens runners. So Queens still running strong. They are going for that team title. Um, their men's team has had some good results the past few years. They are 
They're really uh, rapping. OK, TVA Sport est votre réseau pour les séries de la Coupe Vanille Canada Vie 2023 dès le samedi prochain avec les Coupes Mitchell et Utec. La grande finale parvenant du stade Richardson est le 25 novembre dès 12h30 à Kingston. La Coupe Vanille Canada Vie exclusivement aux ondes de TVA Sport. CBC TV is your home for the 2023 Canada Life Vanier Cup from Kingston, Ontario. Catch the best in university sport action Saturday, November 25th at 1 p.m. Eastern on CBC TV, CBC Gem, and cbcsports.ca. Oh, il y a eu du changement ici dans la course Reed. Euh, donc, on a trois gars de Laval qui sont dans le top 10 en ce moment. Et on a Jean-Simon Degagné et Philippe Onocartier qui est au devant. Et euh, ça semble euh, être une bataille entre UBC et Laval. Voyons voir euh, où on sera rendu ici. On a une petite montée très rapide qui peut changer le rythme. Une autre euh, personne de Laval et de UBC. Donc, euh, une lutte très chaude entre les deux équipes. Yes, I mean, what I just saw there from... From early, so uh, Miles Brackenbury was in fourth place on that on that preliminary 3K split. He looks like he's moved back, and from what I saw, Jonathan Tedeschi has moved up. So, well, I think I, I think that we're going to have a really close uh, uh, team score here when we get the next um, uh, the next uh, tally here at um, 6K. Um, we also say, yeah, it looks like PMC is really like pushing the pace and opening up this race. Um, he made a move, and Andrew Davies. Looks like he's just a little bit back of that, um, and Nick Bannon even a bit back of that. So, um, if someone, if when you see separation this early in the race, it, that's a strong move because um, there's a long way to go. Most of the time, a move can be covered unless it really is strong. So, um, this is this is really uh, this is really ramping up. So <laughs> once again, yeah, PMC looks like he's got Andrew Davies on the rope. So. Um, He is he, he's making a move here. This is a strong move for sure. Andrew Davies winning the, the Can West third place here last year. Uh, PMC was second here last year. So they, they know each other, right? Like they were they were back to back. They're the top two returnees from last year. Um, so it looks like at the at the at the moment it's in that same order of PMC just ahead of Andrew Davies. So um, the course record uh, on this uh, for for the university athletes at least is 24-34 by Max. That's um that was Andrew Davies' teammate last year at McMaster. Um, uh, he's uh, actually uh, uh, Max just ran a, a 62-minute half marathon this year. So you know the, a lot of these U sport athletes go on to. Uh, To, to do some pretty great things. We got um, Jean Simon's already done uh, big things on the world scene, like just like his t uh, old teammate there, uh, Charles Philibert Thibauteau, who uh, also won uh, a gold medal at the Pan Am Games, him in the 1500 meter. It's a perfect setup, I think, the U Sport um, circuit uh, doing cross country and track, but with a little bit less pressure than you would see maybe in the NCAA and the United States. So it allows you to be strong and ready to go for the summertime when there's national teams happening. All right, yeah. Look at look at look at these look at these runners. They are they are trying hard. They are in the back half of an AK cross country race. This is no easy feat. Um, the turns, the terrain, it just beats you up. Okay, here we come. We're coming up to the 6K. So this is this is the last uh, time check that we're going to get before the finish in uh, in 2K. So they're pretty far out right now f um, from from the finish line in terms of uh, not you, you know you don't see any. Um, Uh, fans around here because they're they're far back on the course. But here we go. We got uh, Andrew Davies, Philippe Monod, Cartier, Jacob Benoit. So that was the Dal athlete um, who who's up there. So we haven't talked about Jacob Benoit much, but he was um, 11th place last year. Last year, I see Jared Howes from UNB is well up there. Um, so and we also haven't talked about Thomas La Violette much um, from Montreal Carabin, but he is having a great race today, uh, sitting in sixth place. John Perrier, the uh, the Guelph transfer running for UBC now, is having a uh, a good one up in seventh. Jude Wheeler D in eighth. Jonathan Tedeschi in ninth. As I thought, I saw Jonathan Tedeschi move up. Nick Bannon, um, I, I uh, has moved back a bit. Roman Miranov running strong. Javier uh, Tawana from UBC. You know that UBC really needs their, their third place uh, runner 
to uh, to do well today. So it was good to see Jai up there. Um, Daniel Damien from the Vikes still up there. We have uh, Jonathan uh, Pibielski from Regina. Uh, we haven't mentioned him as well, but he's sitting right now in that final uh, all-Canadian position. But the suspense will last for a little bit longer as UBC Thunderbirds are now... Uh, at 60 points, and Laval is at 61 points for team. So it's going to be a really intense finish. About 2K to go, a little less for the front runners. And we have um, a battle between Andrew Davies and Philippe Morneau-Cartier with Jacques Benoit and Jean-Simon Degagny. They were really a group of four, yes. uh, and they were about eight seconds ahead of the second pack. Yeah, it's anybody's race, really. Like, uh, I, I saw, it looked like Philippe Monod Cartier is the one that pushed the, the pace early and really kind of separated that group. But they've responded well, and now they're all running with the pack. Um, very interesting that Laval and UBC are, go, are only separated by one point because of last year uh, at the U Sport Championships, their women's teams uh, were only separated by one point at the finish. Uh, Laval with 49 points and uh, UBC with 50. So here we go. Jacob Benoit. Um, ha, he ran for Saint FX um, last year. He's the uh, he is the AUS champion. is is running up there. Andrew Davies back there at fourth. So yeah, this this top four. It looks like Davies is on the ropes again. Um, he's a tough runner. I wouldn't be surprised if he come back. So as you can get the uh, the the, res the the team scores midway through, we're really looking at uh, UBC and Laval. Um, we're paying attention to that. And then, you know, the third place is still going to be close between uh, Queens and Guelph. Guelph took OUs, but that was with uh, Jude Wheeler-D uh, uh, dropping out. So maybe with Jude in the mix, uh, maybe they turn the tables on, um, on, on Guelph here at the uh, U-Sport Championships. I'm um, looking forward to see if Jean-Simon... Which is he was in third place. Now he's back in second. So is it going to be a one-two Laval? Jacques Benoit is dropping into third, but Max Davies seems to be coming up on his shoulder. Laval un deux. Uh, on est en train de faire uh, le dernier droit. On arrive environ à sept kilomètres. So there uh, we go, Andrew Davies. Uh, you know, he, like I said, he's a tough guy. He's coming back now. You, a couple of times in this race, he looks like he's, he's dropping off that pack, but he's making a move on Jacob Benoit for that third spot. Uh, Philippe Monod cartier it looks like he's, he, he's, he's putting that final move in to, to seal the deal. He was second here last year. He probably really wants that win. And Jean-Simon Degagné uh, in second place, that's going to give Laval a, a one-two punch is really going to help these team scores. And, then, and Andrew Davies in third place, he's also looking for a, a UBC uh, low stick. So we have, a, we have an exciting top three podium, but it also is going to play into the team scores. La route vers la Coupe Vanille Canada Vie 2023 se poursuit samedi prochain avec la Coupe Mitchell en direct de Vancouver quand les champions de l'Atlantique, les X-Men de saint fix s'opposeront au Thunderbird de UBC pour une place dans la Coupe Vanille Canada Vie, la Coupe Mitchell 2023, samedi dès 15h, heure de l'Est à TVA Sport. The road to Canada Life Vanier Cup continues next Saturday. Tune in 3 p.m. on cbcsports.ca. We're back here with the finish of the 8K at the U Sports Cross Country Championships. We have less than a kilometer run in this exciting race with Philippe Monod Cartier taking this race by the horns. Look at the look at the speed, Alex. <laughs> Absolutely that's incredible. 500, that's the coaches said that they were absolutely ready to go, and Philip might win this over Jean Simon. And Jean Simon coming back, sprinting as hard as he can. Alors Philip Morneau Cartier qui regarde à l'arrière, il espère voir Jean Simon qui s'en vient, et c'est ce qui se passe. Mais Max Davies, Andrew Davies, uh, Andrew Davies, sorry, at the back in third place, trying to catch up on Jean Simon. And is it going to change before the last few meters? Wow, so we have an individual race here and a team battle taking shape here. I mean, I, I think in the last 200 meters here, we, we, we can see that uh, PMC is going to take this over JSD. Um, but but Jean Simon is not giving up here. He is, I mean, he's got the speed. He's giving it right to the end. He's also probably, uh, you know, sealing up that second place over Andrew Davies. Here we go. Philippe Morneau Cartier is your 2023 U Sports cross country champion, followed by Jean Simon de Gagné. And then in third place, rounding out the podium, Andrew Davies. Look at the gap that those three athletes put on the rest of the field. 
Um, that that is. And uh, Jacob Benoit was with them until a K to go, so yes. that was a really fast last K. And here we go, little downhill before you go for the straightaway. And I think that's probably uh, Jacob Benoit, yes, from Dow, John Perrier from UBC, um, La Violette there from Montreal Caribbean, and then Jared Howes. Uh, it looks like he's uh, it, he was uh, sixth place maybe, so he's um, uh, improved on his uh, eighth from last year. Was that uh, Miranov uh, and, and Wheeler D uh, from Queens? So, um, it, you know, did, it looks like Queens – fell off the team standing. I think that's Jonathan Tedeschi, maybe, that just finished. Yeah, in um, 10th place. Yeah, so so you Laval, like, really uh, really coming on strong here with the uh, with, with, with the t in the top 10. And the first runner from Guelph, Max Davies, came uh, in uh, 11th place. So Max Davies, no relation to Andrew Davies, even though Andrew Davies does have a younger brother racing today for McMaster. Max is not part of the... That family there. So uh, Rowan Nabotsin from Guelph just dipping the line there, trying to get that extra place. Another Queens runner coming through. So, yeah, a lot of action. Like, you know, five-second difference here uh, mid-pack, you know, you can, can change the change the, the, the your, your scoring by uh, a few. So um, it's, you know, really hard to keep track. But we're going we're gonna to have team scores coming up in a little bit. Um, it was such a tight battle at the 6K mark between – uh, Laval and and UBC, it's 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 really just too close to call. Um, but you know the top three top three scores, Laval has it. But you know where your fourth and fifth runner um, come in is is going to be the telling tale of who who takes this. Seems like we have a fourth runner from uh, Laval, who's uh, Rudy Sal, uh, coming into twelfth place. Donc Laval 1, 2, uh, 10 et 12. Ça va être dur à battre pour les. Uh, Thunderbirds de UBC, donc on va voir où les autres euh, euh, athlètes se sont situés dans la course, mais euh, quelle, quelle poussée de Philippe Morneau-Cartier à la fin pour aller remporter le championnat individuel devant Jean-Simon Desgagné. Il faut avoir euh, du courage pour euh, décider de euh, vouloir battre Jean-Simon Desgagné après une saison de rêve pour lui, qui va se terminer avec une deuxième place euh, au championnat U-Sport. Il voulait la première place, il voulait mettre ça sur son, euh, sur son euh, curriculum vitae, mais malheureusement, Jean-Simon a terminé deuxième, mais je pense qu'il a de quoi être très fier parce qu'on a très hâte de voir les résultats des, par équipe. Mais ça devrait être très, très serré. Euh, pour l'instant, pour l'instant, euh, on n'a pas de résultats encore euh, par équipe. On attend avec impatience. Yeah, the team results are still coming up here, but... Uh... You know, if you're going off of top top four, Laval has it. But um, you know, it's not top four that that, that make the. See, <laughs> it's not top four. Read your right. Uh, it seems like UBC Thunderbirds might have win, well, might have won this race as a as a team, um, finishing with 50 points, and then second is Queen Gales, finishing with 82 points, and third. Guelph Griffins uh, getting that last medal um, on the podium in fourth place. UNB Reds. We'll see if those uh, keep uh, keep the same. But I'm surprised that we're not seeing Laval at a higher ranking right now. We might have only four out of five athletes that have been through the gates, and that's why we might have a little uh, difficulty here. Uh, Technical technical difficulty because maybe it this fifth runner has came yeah, by that but can't it be right. wasn't if it says laval at 415 points and their first no four, it's because they don't have the oh, there's four, four out, out of fifth. five yeah oh wow the screen's a little far away from me there <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh well yeah they, they four four in the top 12 let's see where their fifth runner One. comes in ubc um their women just won the uh u sport championship so if they go um if they got if they if they get both of these, that's a great day there for UBC. Um, congratulations to them, Queens, uh, battling it up there. They looks like they looks like they uh, got the top OUA team um, with Jude Wheeler D having a uh, a very strong finish here in eighth place. Um, he was the top uh, top Queens finisher today, um, so he dropped out at a. Si on regarde les quatre premiers coureurs de Laval sont 
euh, ils sont plus, euh, presque plus rapides que les euh, quatre premiers coureurs de UBC. Donc, on attend à voir s'il y a eu une erreur technique au niveau des résultats par équipe parce que euh, au niveau de la cinq, du cinquième coureur, on n'a pas de résultats. Donc, on se demande vraiment ce qui s'est passé. Est-ce qu'il y a euh, un problème technique ou est-ce que le cinquième coureur a dû abandonner au niveau de Guelph? Euh, C'est ce qu'on va voir dans les prochaines minutes. Mais pour l'instant... Euh, L'Université de la Colombie-Britannique remporte chez les messieurs et remporte aussi chez les dames. Donc, un doublé par équipe euh, du côté euh, de l'Université de la Colombie-Britannique. Yeah, and Laval will have, I mean, if, if they do have a fifth runner out there that hasn't been tabulated, it will have to be a good fifth runner because, you know, as, as well as, um, as UBC did up front there with a third place from uh, Andrew Davies and, and John Perry right back there, um, up there as well their their fifth runner was 21st as far as team scorings goes so they you know they they obviously had a deep team as well um so you know i i, I mean it looks i mean if it hasn't popped up yet i'm, I'm gonna guess uh as as the minutes go by these results do become more official um but uh ubc great great showing there um to 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 have the the women's team title and the men's team title um Uh, you know, they came out here to the course earlier in the year to uh, get a feel for this course. Um, they do; they did have a lot of uh, athletes who, pri who who were running for Ontario schools earlier, um, and uh, and they just brought it today. Um, they they ran. I, I would say UBC ran really well in the second half of that course. Um, But the strange thing about the Université Laval results is that there were seven runners that were signed up today, and there's only four that have crossed the finish line so far. So probably we'll see some different um, some different uh, some different results for the for the team. So we are staying at the edge of our seats here to yeah. see who will be um, uh, who will be. Um, Yep. taking the team title but so far UBC on the men's side and the women's side yeah because they do they do have a few more runners there that were okay last year David Giardin was 32nd last year um, Reed it's been a pleasure to uh, be commentating with you today thank you for being here merci beaucoup Reed yeah thanks everyone for tuning in for these exciting cross country championships here in Thames Valley uh, golf course here in London um, thanks a lot to uh, the host Uh, Western Mustangs and uh, meet director Bob Viggers, who uh, has been putting on great races here for years. And thanks to all the uh, the camera work, the drone shots were great. Um, the uh, all the cameras that they had on the course and the timing from Sport Made Simple uh, with a, with a team of uh, uh, of these of the ex runners of the OUA. Um, they were uh, they, they 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 had a lot of great information. Um, this was a really exciting day. A lot of uh, cool uh, storylines and, and, and battles fought on the, uh, on the golf course here. Et oui, après une grande journée comme ça, on ne pourrait pas s'empêcher de dire merci à tous les partisans pour votre support incroyable à, à travers le Canada pour le sport universitaire. On vous invite à continuer de regarder U-Sport à Radio-Canada, CBC et TVA Sport. Le match de la médaille d'or de soccer masculin se poursuit à Radio-Canada, suivi par la grande finale de soccer féminin à 15h, heure de l'Est. Fin de semaine prochaine, nous vous invitons également à nous suivre les Coupes Utec et Mitchell et la Coupe Vanier Canada Vie 2023, le samedi 25 novembre aux ondes de CBC et notre partenaire de diffusion de football francophone, TVA Sport. Donc, pour la dernière fois, au nom de Reed et de moi-même euh, et de toute l'équipe de CBC Sports à London en Ontario, on vous dit à bientôt.